uh, welcome to uh, this month's sales tip, uh, the sales tip for April 2012. My name is Tim Royds and I'm director of Highclear, a company that provides sales consultancy and sales training service for the B2B sector, both in the UK and internationally. The focus of this month's tip is ironically going to be on a selling question that you shouldn't ask. And this has been prompted by an experience I enjoyed with a client that we worked with in January this year when we developed a uh, highly tailored bespoke workshop for them, very specifically for them, and this was focused on how to structure and implement that first critical meeting with a prospect organization so that you do in le indeed leave the first impression that you want. Now for them, it really is a critical meeting because as a consequence of this meeting, the door will be opened to meetings with other members of the decision-making unit, the DMU, or indeed it will be closed, full stop. So it really is a critical meeting. Now in advance of the workshop, I thought it would be quite interesting to interview exactly one of the sorts of people that they're looking to access and impress, a business unit head. Now let me quote very specifically one of the questions I asked when I interviewed uh, this particular individual. The question I asked was, when meeting a salesperson from a potential long-term partner organization who you have only limited knowledge of, what would you expect them to do during that first critical meeting? Now, now listen to the words, and again, I'm gonna quote exactly, listen to the words that uh, this business unit head used when he answered that question. Too many people, he said, regurgitate what they do, which is a turnoff. I want them to show an interest in me and my company. I hate it though when I'm asked, tell me about your business, as they should already have found out the basics. I want them to tell me about my business and how their proposition fits with it. This shows me that they are professional. They can then ask relevant open questions so they can add all the detail onto what they already know. This means they can identify potential benefits to me. They should, though, have found out enough information to have a start point. It's important that people find out about the person as well as the business. It's not difficult these days, and you should always check LinkedIn. Now, isn't that interesting? Now, let's go back to what he said about that one particular question. Tell me about your business. You know, five years ago or so, that would probably be a really good recommended way to start a first conversation with a prospect. Please tell me all about your business. But the world's changed now. We're living in an information rich world. In the past, that question might have shown interest in the customer and a desire to learn more. Today, when you ask that question, what it shows is a lack of preparation and a lack of professionalism. Now, let's talk about some of the preparation that you should do. Now, clearly, the obvious things are things like get onto Google, do a search about the organization and look at the company's website. Those are absolute basics. But as that business unit head said, it's really important to learn about the individual as well. And LinkedIn is a great source of information there. Now LinkedIn can provide you the obvious things like job title. Uh, look also for things like job descriptions and career pathways because that begins to give an insight into some of the key benefits that the prospect's going to be looking for from the solution or solutions that you have to offer. Also have a look at some of the uh, potentially less obvious things though, such as the groups and associations that they're involved with. Do you know what those groups and associations are recommending at the moment? What the key topics of discussion are at the moment? Because again, that will give you an insight into some of the key benefits that the prospect is looking for and some of the things that are going to be influencing their thinking. Have a look at their connections as well. You know, you, you never know. You just might have a connection in common. That gives you an opportunity to have a really powerful introduction from somebody who they already know rather than the cold introduction when you meet them for the first time. And you know, have a look at the, the, the whole of the profile, the flavor of it, the tone of it, because that provides an indication of how that individual wants to portray themselves on the internet. And that gives you an insight into their personality style. That can help prepare your mind for the kind of style you want to employ during the meeting. Don't forget to Google them personally as well. You never know what you're gonna turn up. It could be involvement with a sports team. 
it could be an involvement with a charity event. Again, the obvious things, but it's a nice icebreaker at the start of the conversation. More importantly, it shows that you're professional and you've done the preparatory work that prospects today expect a standard. So here's the call to action on this month's sales tip. We get back to the good old classic six Ps, don't we? Here we go. Professional, preparation, prevents, pretty, poor, performance. The six Ps. And research on the internet clearly is a critical part of that. Find out what you can about the prospect organization. Find out what you can about the individual you're going to be meeting. LinkedIn is fantastic. But, and again, as the business unit head, I enjoyed the privilege of interviewing said, use this as a start point. Don't make assumptions, they're really dangerous things. But you can use this information as a start point. Ask further open questions on the back of that. Understand the customer's needs and move things forward from there. But please, we live in an age of information that's easy and simple to access. The old question that used to work well, please, tell me all about your business. Today it sends just the wrong signal.